the Stella's sea cow is an extinct herbivorous marine mammal. It was the largest member of the order Sirenia, which includes its closest living relative, the dugong, and the manatees. It reached up to 9 meters in length, making it among the largest mammals other than whales to have existed in the Holocene epoch. Although the sea cow had formerly been abundant throughout the North Pacific, by 1741, when it was first described by Georg Wilhelm Stella, chief naturalist on an expedition led by explorer Vitus Bering, its range had been limited to a single, isolated population surrounding the uninhabited Commander Islands. Within 27 years of discovery by Europeans, the slow-moving and easily captured Stella's sea cow was hunted to extinction. Description The sea cow grew to at least 8 to 9 meters in length as an adult, much larger than the manatee or dugong. However, concerning their weight, Stella's work contains two contradictory estimates, 4 and 24.3 metric tons. The true value is estimated to lie between these figures, at around 8 to 10 t. It looked somewhat like a large seal, but had two stout forelimbs and a whale-like fluke. According to Stella, it is not the sea cow of Aristotle, for it never comes upon dry land to feed, but it can use its four limbs for a number of tasks, swimming, walking on the shallows of the shore, supporting himself on the rocks, digging for algae and sea grasses, fighting, and embracing each other. It is covered with a thick hide, more like unto the bark of an ancient oak than unto the skin of an animal. The Manatee Euro unregistered trademark S hide is black, mangy, wrinkled, rough, hard, and tough. It is void of hairs, and almost impervious to an axe or to the point of a hook. Its head is small and short compared to the huge body. The upper lip is so large, so broad, and extends so far beyond the mandible, that the mouth appears to be located underneath the skull. The mouth is rather small, toothless, and equipped with double lips, both above and below. When it closes its mouth, the space between the lips is filled up with a dense array of very thick white bristles, 1.5 inches long. These bristles take the place of teeth and are used to pull out seaweed and hold food. Mastication is performed by two white bones or solid tooth masses. Behavior it was completely tame, according to Stella. It fed on a variety of kelp. Wherever sea cows had been feeding, heaps of stalks and roots of kelp were washed ashore. The sea cow was also a slow swimmer and apparently was unable to submerge. Habitat The number of sea cows was small and limited in range when Stella first described them. Although he had said they were numerous and found in herds, Zoologist Lenhard Hestiger later estimated that at discovery there had been fewer than 1,500 remaining, and thus had been in immediate danger of extinction from overenting. There is evidence that sea cows also inhabited the near islands during historic times. Oral tradition on Achi stated that sea cows were still hunted there after their extinction on the Commander Islands. Fossils indicate Stella's sea cow was formerly widespread along the North Pacific coast reaching south to Japan and California in the U.S. Given the rapidity with which its last population was eliminated, aboriginal hunting likely caused its extinction over the rest of its original range. Population and extinction, the species was quickly wiped out by the sailors, seal hunters, and fur traders who followed Bering's route past the islands to Alaska, who hunted it both for food and for skins, which were used to make boats. It was also hunted for its valuable subcutaneous fat, which was not only used for food, but also for oil lamps because it did not give off any smoke or odor and could be kept for a long time in warm weather without spoiling. By 1768, 27 years after it had been discovered by Europeans, Stella's sea cow was extinct. It has been argued that the sea cow's decline may have also been an indirect response to the harvest of sea otters by Aboriginal people from the inland areas. With the otters reduced, the population of sea urchins would have increased and reduced availability of kelp, the sea cow's primary source of food. Thus, aboriginal hunting of both species may have contributed to the sea cow's disappearance from continental shorelines. In historic times, though, aboriginal hunting had depleted sea otter populations only in localized areas. The sea cow would have been easy prey for aboriginal hunters, 
who would likely have exterminated accessible populations with or without simultaneous otter hunting. In any event, the sea cow was limited to coastal areas off islands without a human population by the time Bering arrived, and was already endangered. It has been demonstrated that the extinction of the sea cow could have been affected solely by the hunting of the sea cow for meat by fur trading mariners of the time, and no other factors needed to have contributed. Portrayals in Media Tales of a Sea Cow is a 2012 film by Icelandic French artist Etienne de France documenting a fictional 2006 rediscovery by scientists of a population of Stella's sea cows off the coast of Greenland via sound recordings or their calls. This film has been exhibited in public institutions such as art museums and universities in Europe. Art critic Anik Burid found the film a tongue-in-cheek and joyous but unsettling fable. See also List of extinct animals, List of extinct animals of North America, Evolution of Cyrenians References External links, Animal Diversity Web, Stella's Sea Cow Information from the AMIQ Institute Hans Rothorsch's Die Stellisch CQ site, illustration of a sea cow skeleton and an extract from Stella's description.